Some of the top names in conservative circles are being subpoenaed to Capitol Hill to explain their questionable ties to Supreme Court justices all as a part of a sweeping ethics probe. The Senate Judiciary Committee last month authorized subpoenas of Republican mega-donor Harlan Crow and conservative activist Leonard Leo. But Crow and Leo pushing back, of course, and they aren't the only ones. The Republican members of the committee, including Senator Lindsey Graham, calling the subpoena's vote a joke. The ethics investigation is looking to get to the bottom of recent reporting detailing Justices Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito taking lavish trips on donors' dimes and accepting previously undisclosed gifts. The Supreme Court last month adopted what it's calling an ethics code, but failed to disclose how those new rules would be enforced and by whom. Joining me now is Democratic Senator, Senator Maisie Hirono, a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Senator, it's an honor to have you on the show. As I mentioned, you and your Democratic, thank you, and you and your Democratic colleagues on the Senate Judiciary Committee facing a significant obstacle of Harlan Crow and Leonard Leo refused to comply with your subpoenas. How are you going to be able to convince Senate Republicans to vote to enforce the subpoenas if the Republicans on your committee won't even participate in the vote? Well, so far, they've been totally obstructionist in terms of uh, requesting or requiring the Supreme Court to follow a code that every other judge has to follow. So uh, one wonders, what are they trying to hide? And the American public, also, I would say, want to know, because look at how the American public regards the Supreme Court. You know, they, they don't think very highly of the Supreme Court. So here's our effort to impose or require a code of ethics. and. As you know, that the Supreme Court finally, um, I think after a lot of uh, emphasis and pushing by the Democrats on the Judiciary Committee and others, they finally said, well, here's our code, but as you know, there's no enforcement mechanism. There's, uh, there's very little in terms of uh, when they should be recusing themselves, which is another huge concern regarding this Supreme Court. Senator, another important issue that was raised this past week on Wednesday, Republicans in the Senate voted to block an emergency spending bill that would have provided $110 billion to Ukraine, Israel, and for other security measures. Republicans are demanding more on immigration and on the southern border. But if Russia continues unchecked, how dangerous does that become for us in the United States? If at a time when we should be uh, providing support, which, by the way, has bipartisan support for both Ukraine and Israel, if we do not do our jobs and then that support, because the Republicans want to try and extract something uh, relating to our, our borders and uh, our policies there in a permanent way, then I think the world is watching, and, and, and they will think far, far less of uh, the United States if we don't provide the kind of assistance that we should be providing. So this is yet another time where the Republicans have decided that they're going to extract concessions from Democrats to make major changes, permanent changes to, for example, our asylum provisions. And, you know, the, this is immigration reform is something we tackled. 10 years ago, comprehensive immigration reform. We did it before, and if we can operate in good faith, we can make those kinds of changes that we managed to do uh, 10 years ago, and that's what I'm calling for, comprehensive immigration reform. Meantime, we should not uh, combine the, the very, very important aid that we need to provide to Ukraine and Israel, combining that by um, extracting concessions, uh, basically taking uh, immigrants hostage and what should be a straightforward bipartisan support for Ukraine and Israel. President Biden hitting a new important milestone recently. It also happened while it was on your watch. The Senate confirmed his 150th federal judge. According to the Pew Research Center analysis of statistics from the Federal Judicial Center, nearly two-thirds or 60 percent have been women, and that same share being racial or ethnic minorities. That's more than any other president ever. Senator, what does that mean to you as a woman of color serving on the Senate Judiciary Committee to see such a milestone reached? I, all I can say is that uh, it's historic and about time. And as the only immigrant serving on the United States Senate, believe me, uh, diversity and supporting you know, people with different backgrounds is critically important. And this is not just some kind of, uh, uh, oh, <laughs> as an immigrant, it means a lot to me that we have a, a president who supports that diversity on our courts. And I think that also helps people to look at our courts as a way where they can get objective and fair justice. 
Senator Maisie Hirono. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and happy holidays. Same to you. Everyone stay safe. Be kind. Thank you.